Cal Mole from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And on Halloween Day, I'm here once more at the Compass at VCU to spread the message of freedom. So if you enjoy this content, please share and subscribe if you can, and I'll see you guys at the Victory Party. Take good care. So that's the hidden violence behind this matrix, behind government. This organization only knows how to sell problems in one way, a singular way, right? And that's the threat of any of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality though of non-violent solutions that you and I already share. What are your thoughts on that? Um, well, the problem is that if you create all these laws, whatever, saying that, like, let's say cannabis is bad, most people aren't going to import or abide by it. Right. So how can they expect it, or how can they remain at a law without having some sort of force behind it to... Like, I see where you're coming yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also see why they need the force. Right. All right, so they're like the areas where we need, you know what I mean? I want rules, right? I want law. I want security. I want force. I want judges. I want roads and courts. But these are the areas that government has monopolized, right? They don't allow the freedom to cancel, unsubscribe, or even have the freedom as you as an individual to compete and provide a better service. It's not going to be harmful and abusive to you. You have to go through the government. Right? They even have a monopoly on law. Yeah. They don't allow polycentric legal systems. They don't allow rich, diverse communities to can have rules within those communities. Yeah. You can have a 420 apartment complex, great, one across the street, that's not. Yeah. Right? So within government, it forces one preference onto everyone into a geographic region. Based on Right, and that's so. Then it's the the greatest. Uh, the, the majority for good is also the uh, um, to the minority, and that's you know. So it's the greatest greatest good for the majority, but the greatest evil for the minority. Yeah. Right. So that's why government can't meet people's needs. Can't meet, meet, can't meet everyone's needs. Right. Because everyone's gonna have different opinions. Yeah. Right. And you can't force that opinion on everyone else because they think it's wrong. Right. And in the area like we, we said, it's wrong and more to initiate that violence to yeah. force their ideas onto everyone. So if you universalize that principle, like you universalize like uh, laws of nature, like in gravity on thermodynamics, <laughs> universalize and says it doesn't matter who you are, what title you claim, or costume you wear, it's wrong and more for anyone to initiate that violence, yeah. right? Especially for victimless crimes, right? So that's called the non-aggression principle, right? Uh, so that's so that's that's the point. So without government, though, if we, we abolish and let go of the idea, you, you free up a free and voluntary society. You can have your golf course community. You can have a community that's 420 friendly. You can have an Amish community. I mean, those kind of exist already, yeah. right? So you can have a policy legal system. You can have real contracts. You know what I sent? Right? You never give consent for Social Security. Yeah. Right? But you're still forced to pay for it. And we probably won't even get it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you never had that. So that's we, we have to pay for the old people because they put that into place a long time ago. Right? But they had a lifetime to save. Yeah. Lifetime to save. But they're able to boot off the cost to the next generation later. And then right now, nearly half your income stolen. All this regulations, all this loss didn't exist back then for them. It was so much easier for people to buy houses, to, to have a job. Now, you know, 60 years later, yeah, it's not. And then we're still forced to pay for them. Right. Time. Right. <laughs> so it's just more like, so that's, that's what the nature of government is than reality. If you have political rulers, and to them, we're nothing but tax cap. Yeah. To them, this whole area is nothing but a tax bond. Right. Um, so that's just really it. So you know, you apply that principle universally, and you realize you never needed a government to begin with, right? We, we can be more agents, you know, if we just kind of reach out to one another and talk about these principles. We can form contracts, real contracts, like the social contract is not a real contract. <laughs> d d yeah, d social contract doesn't exist. Uh, the Constitution, you can't, there's no power of attorney. You never gave these old guys years ago before you were born to force it onto you, right? It's like like them, like them, like a stranger forcing a, a mortgage contract onto you and say, well, you have to pay for it, regardless if you want it or not, right? Kind of like Social Security, it's like every single government service, yeah. right? Um, you get it whether you like it or not. Right. <laughs> so you have all these roads. I mean, you didn't vote to pay for each individual road. Right. They're going to pay them. They're going to put it out anyway. Right. And yeah, and, and, yeah, and that's, that's what we end up happening. Without government, you finally have a free market. Anyone can compete. Anyone can say, I could do it better. Yeah, like, I, could, I could make these roads for half the cost. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and then there'll be no more taxes, so you don't have this increase of taxes. But that's yeah. what happens when you have a monopoly in anything. Costs always continue to rise, and quality continues to depreciate. It's like they make us pay these taxes and they say it's for roads and schools and it is, but it's also for the military. Right. <laughs> which is like a gigantic portion. It is, it it's is. Like, oh, we're helping you. It's like, really? At the same time, we're drone bombing children overseas. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's like, well, uh, can I have a choice? It's like, can I just give my tax for the roads and schools and not like, I'll just pay like 60% of the tax. Right. <laughs> like, so that's what they call it then, right? Yeah. So 
And then, so they hide the nature of the language. So they'll say, they put a law and their opinion, and they'll say, it's wrong for you to steal. We're just gonna go ahead and call it taxes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? And then, then they'll say, you're not allowed to murder, but then we'll call it by a different name and call it organized war. Yeah. Right? So that's really the nature of government, that they hide the true relationship between us and them. <laughs> Bunch of hypocrisy. It is, it is. Bunch of liars and thieves. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, I got pamphlets if you like. I'll take a pamphlet. Yeah. There you go, man. Uh, so yeah, a lot of this idea is supposed to be uh, like free market anarchism, like uh, anar anarchy by definition, like uh, anions and canons. An means without, archy means rules, right? Like monarchy, one political ruler, anarchy means without political rulers. We can still have rules again, right? Yeah. But government has to monopolize so, like, those Iceland, rules. I think, recently, they lost. How do you? Oh, go ahead. They've lost their form of government, and they all just kind of went to a form of anarchy, basically, where they all just kind of live and do go about their lives anyways. But actually, Iceland did have like almost a, an anarchistic uh, state society during medieval times for like nearly 500 years yes. and, 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 and things, the thing, things are great back then uh, during those times <laughs> they only gave one exception though to government and eventually that's why it collapsed yeah. and that's that's what you don't want to do give yeah. one exception to evil and that evil will fester and grow like a tumor right Just like <laughs> <laughs> yeah well wow. cool my name is Cal Brandon Brandon pleasure to meet you man thank you have a happy Halloween you too so at the same time, then government has even found out there's more violence because at no point though can you say I do want to help the poor, but I don't want to fund war, right? You have no freedom of economic choice. Right. Your taxes go to a thing that is then right. separated out regardless of what you believe. In. Right. Because if uh, you did have a freedom of economic choice with how to allocate your own money and your own resources, the government wouldn't threaten to send you to another cage if you didn't pay your taxes. Right. So that's the hidden violence behind this matrix behind government. That this organization only knows how to solve problems through one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems. Versus already the plurality though of nonviolent solutions that you and I. What about, uh, you know, government is not always bad. A lot of the things like regulating, for example, with planning or with, uh, you know, through incentives to try to help communities provide things like we were talking earlier off camera about uh, the importance of having barbers and people who own stores. You know, but those are not government agents. Those are yeah. market agents. Mm -hmm. right, those are questionably, yeah. question, you know, like they you know, provided incentives to start a business. Hey, what's up, brother? Well, government doesn't really give anything away. They, everything they give away was taken from someone else, right, through taxes. Right. Right. So yeah. if you had nearly half your income return, you could have been better investing that into something else, right? Maybe creating your own business. Maybe, but people, you know, there's the, uh, what's it called, the, um, the tragedy of the commons, if everybody, if there's a pile of something that everybody has equal access to, then nobody's going to have equal access to it, because someone's going to go and take more than they deserve. So the regulated return of uh, the common good is what the government's there for, in some cases, for example, taxes, right, regulated so that people who have good business plans, who are going to serve an underserved community, they'll receive a tax incentive, whether it's through abatement or through grant money. Well, give me an example. Give me an example in an area of this. <laughs> so if uh, you live in the arts and cultural district, or even if you're interested in investing there, yeah. you, get, you can get a grant to improve an existing building that is in disrepair and is a nuisance to the community. Why wasn't it in disrepair to begin with? Because people who owned it didn't care about it. Maybe because uh, the property to taxes are too high to pay for it. Maybe the regulations are controlling you to starting your own business. You have to pay like $600 in the state of Washington to cut hair. Right? A lot of different ways to discriminate from people from wanting to start. Uh, the statistics came out from Reason.com. You're 75% poor because all the restrictions on just voluntary trade. Mm -hmm. Right? Just this exchanging goods. That's all we're doing. Right, right? but it's not a free market system. It's if not. It's market, state controlled. Not even that. It's controlled by those with more money. If you're trying to start something small and there was no regulation, if, say, if I, if there was no assistance for me to start that business in the arts and culture industry, there's no way that I would do it there. That's a community that exists where people live who need businesses, places to shop so that they don't have to own a car. It's so much taxes. harder though to create a business. You have to go to joining regulations, you have to go to fire marshals, you have to go through, uh, you have to get your, your permits, you have to get your all kinds of different licenses, uh, exceptions to those permits, and there's just so much uh, legal costs you have to pay just to even to trade with another human being. But it's, for the, good, it's for the How's safety. That, for, for what safety? So that you have the ample fire exits, for example, with fire marshals. Well, I, would, I would assume that the business owner can best provide that for, for himself and find a, a market for that. You no, know? 
that's not what happened. Right, in Brazil, there was a fire last summer. There were over 250 people died because they found it more cost effective to not have appropriate, they, to not enforce fire codes right. on, upon themselves. And basically, they had one entrance, one exit because that's how they wanted to do okay, it. Okay, well, then, then, I mean, regulation can be provided in a free market. Mm -hmm. You still have user rating systems like on, on selecting which is the best app. You have this on eBay. There's no government on eBay. You socially ostracize the bad businesses, right? You look at the rating systems and then the good word of mouth that people have to, to your testimony of your ethics so for that you've been consistent in providing good products and services. You can have that outside of government, right? Government has monopolized those areas, though, that they don't allow us the freedom to, to regulate ourselves. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Right? And, and, and areas... I, I don't think that there is, even if it was no government, I don't think that there is freedom. There's people who... Are, who want to and can better control those than the government would, you know, monopolize the system in a much worse way. If you're, yeah, the concept of government is that it's positive. Although you said, we are talking about there's violence and things. Right, so a government's inherently violent. Right. Everything it does steals from everyone else. So those, those opportunities that they have stolen from you and nearly half your income, you could have better invested that in creating a business that accredits other businesses. Hey, four out of five stars, I checked them out. Of course, me as a business, I like to have the accreditation for me, right? It's like, look, safety requirements met. You can have then like thousands of businesses that you can choose from instead of just that one monopolized area. Because whenever you have a monopoly in anything, though, the cost continues to rise as your taxes and property taxes, and the depreciation of quality continues to go down. Right? But isn't there isn't there a lag between uh, people being served poorly and people uh, starting to realize that this is a business I don't want to deal with? Aren't some people going to be immediately impacted in, in a very negative way before that so, business is not is so like a business and it's not what providing a service to a particular community not even that just say like you go shopping at a store that has a lot of money so they have great inventory right and you go there and you shop and then you're like wow i was really served very poorly there i don't like it like right, great yeah they create a business rate them hey the bad shitty customer service mm -hmm. like netflix try to raise their prices overnight mm -hmm. the government did intervene the people intervene right it's like forget that cancel unsubscribe I'm going to who? It's like, I have other options. Yeah, I think it's very interesting to see how the sort of instantaneousness of uh, the internet and just technology is going to yeah. change the way that that sort of thing works. And then that's, that, that makes our government, uh, you know, outdated. Mm -hmm. That makes it useless. It, makes it, it like definitely a, is. We're locked in. We're yeah. locked into the system. <laughs> uh, I understand that. Yeah. But, but I think uh, on a local level, though, government's much more important. It provides, it's, you know, supposed to be sort of beneficial. What's the term? Um, to who? To, to in what areas? Again, Everything. So people who have no power. Do no power? Well, yeah. the thing, if you have no government, there's no need to buy for political power. We're all equal then as individuals. Not just political power, but power for to serve those who have capital, who have money. But I will. I will. But that's, so that's that's the great thing about the free market that is that it will provide a lot of different ways to meet your your economic needs, right? I, I mean, not a form like an iPhone that. 5, but I could get an iPhone 2. Yeah. Right. I can meet other different kind of, uh, I guess, uh, cellular data plans that meets my needs. Mm. There's some that says you can pay monthly or as you go. Different ways to meet different kind of economic needs. But then what the last thing you want to do as a government is monopolize currency. The dollar in your pocket has been monopolized since 1913. Before that, there used to be rich, diverse, different kinds of commodities known as money. The government says no competition is forbidden. Try to compete against us, we're throwing to a cage. It happened to this guy a few years ago. Try to create the Liberty Dollar, to compete against the US dollar. IRS came in, sees his assets, threw him in a cage. But again, when you monopolize anything, the quality always appreciates, and that's why the dollar has lost over 97% of its value. That hurts the poor the worst. No incentive to save. Every dollar you hide underneath your bad mattress is depreciating value. Right? If you even have money. If you even have money, right? right. If you can try to find jobs because of the way the government has created this lack of incentive for us to. to, to, to to hire employees. Hardy was Park Brewery over here, for example. Went to the city council last year, said, hey, listen, we're gonna start uh, this thing over here in the middle of nowhere, and we have to pay meals taxes for beer. And they said, no, no, you're good. I said, like, all right, all right, thanks. Thanks for putting that up. This recently, a couple months ago, the city council said, actually, you do. Uh, back taxes. It's like, whoa, but you said you gave us the clear okay. And so, so that's going to cost them tens of thousands of dollars. And the owner said, you know, this could this could have been the salary of a new employee. Right? So it's just the private sector that creates the jobs, not the government. The government robs those opportunities. I believe that too. I believe right. that's true. But without 
Without some sort of protection, there's got to be somebody or else people are going to be taking Protection, that's the need I want too. So like security. I want security too. Government also has monopoly security, right? You don't have to, I don't care if they high fire one crooked cop, right? I would want that agency to go bankrupt. I would want the agency for me to even have the freedom to compete and provide you better security that's not harmful and abusive to you, the consumer. Throw you into cages for victims' crimes. So you think that, what about security firms like Blackwater that because they're not government agencies can take advantage of the, the fact that they're not being watched as closely? That's a good example. So Blackwater can only exist because of government, because government is able then to use these tax farms, steal all everyone's money, and fund uh, like organizations like Blackwater. Blackwater is funded on, on, through grants, through appropriations. For I see what you're saying. Money. So they're protected right. because they're paid by. Like Monsanto, well, you know, there, there'd be no such thing as corporations without government. All a corporation is is a piece of paper that allows them to escape personal liability. Right. Yeah. Right. So without, it's, it's like government is able to escape liability for their own actions, immunity, and they grant the immunity extension to other CEOs. Without government backing and enforcing that piece of paper, no corporation. So is the problem uh, government or is the problem influence of corporations? It's government because it's, it's without government, there, there's nothing to influence. There's no one to bribe. There's no one to lobby. Right? Except for all the, the masses, the people. And trying to bribe and say, I'll offer you a great deal. Kind of like going to a food court at a, at a mall. The, the, the closest of bribiness that they get is like, try a free sample. <laughs> all these wonderful deals and savings, you know? That's what they're offering. Right? And when you don't have a monopoly in these services, the cost always continues to decrease. The quality always continues to improve. You can look like plasma screen TVs. Or you can look at, uh, like a couple years ago, it cost thousands of dollars. What about automobiles? Same thing with automobiles. Uh, you, you in look the 70s, the quality went down. Well, because now you have these industries who are lobbying for government to prevent new uh, emerging technologies from entering the private sector. Right? You have like uh, Tesla mobiles running on electric, uh, le electricity. Can't even enter the market in North Carolina. Right, the government there is restricting that because they say it's going to, you know, cause uh, economic. Uh, but isn't that a failure of the market and not a failure of the government? But it's the government preventing that from happening. It's Be politics. because the market is influencing them, right? Right. Yeah. So people, yeah. So people use the government to their advantage, mm -hmm. and that's like if that's how corporations are able to level out the playing field to outcompete all the competitors by lobbying for government to pass certain laws to grant them exception, but pushes on to other competitors. So, if, but if there's no government to influence. Then Everyone's on equal playing field. No, wouldn't that wouldn't those <laughs> corporations who are trying to influence government in, turn around and just buy out those other those other organizations that would put them out of business and then shut that down? Oh, like you like trying to buy out your competitors? Yeah. All right, great, great, the great thing then we have no government, no restrictions on trying to create goods and trade with that. That uh, good luck trying to buy everyone else because anyone else can compete still. I only, could, if, I, I, only if you have enough money to start up. Kickstarter campaign, have a fundraiser, do your community grant writing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of different ways to kind of build this stuff up. But the proof is in the pudding a lot of times. People aren't going to invest unless you can already, like, there's a lot of stuff that's been invested on Kickstarter. Yeah, right. But it's not the same as, you know, $500,000 is not the same as $21 million well, you know to what? start a new There's this, the guy who funded PayPal. Mm -hmm. He's, he's uh, funding this billion dollar project to create this uh, transportation system. Mm -hmm. That's not, that. not going to happen. What about this still? Well, are you kidding me? Hold on, why can't it happen? Every single technology was created from the private sector. The cars were created by that, by government, right? Uh, like the computers, laptops, uh, the, the ability to, to, like the memory cards and the way they get smaller and smaller and they still have a lot more data and they become cheaper. That's what, private sector. What about consumer protection? Cons yeah, you still have consumer reports. Mm -hmm. You'll still have ways to regulate that. I can't afford that magazine. Man. Well, you don't have some of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, they give a lot of stuff for free online, right? Uh, they give all of this. I mean, you, you, that, that, that could be, there still be non-profit organizations. There'll still be philanthropists like Carnegie Hall. You know, Carnegie gave out over 2,000 free libraries, even to the public sector, right? There'll still be people who want to give stuff away because they can, right? And when nearly half your income is now stolen from you, there's a lot more to give and share. I suppose, right? Yeah. Right, but, right, right. but going back again to um, to the first three questions we were, we were talking about, like using violence to solve problems, you have to universalize that notion to include everyone. No matter who you are, what title you hold, what costume or color costume you're wearing, or badge or piece of paper you hold up in the air, it's wrong and immoral for anyone to initiate that violence, right? That's called the non-aggression principle. I guess I just don't associate all arms of government with the same, with the violent parts of government. But, uh, you mean, you mean, well, like Social Security was forced on you, you never gave consent, you never gave agreement, you never gave power of attorney. But, but I would, because I think that 
even if you <laughs> even if you weren't able to make a lot of money when you were you lost a lot of money while you were working because maybe you weren't who cares who cares why not maybe you weren't making enough maybe you were spending it on drugs or something sure. and women but when you're old and you don't have any control of your own security not, not like like social security you don't have any control over whether you can afford a healthy place to live healthy food to eat uh, isn't it in the best interest of society to make sure that people don't just then that, that you should be making friends. You should be kind to your community. You should ask, not steal from the young, from the youth, from the generation that had nothing to do with that decision making. You had a lifetime to save. Don't rob the opportunities of the young who have not yet or have that position to do it. But some people are assholes and they still deserve. Well, then assholes don't deserve that kind of kindness. If you're, if you're please, are you kidding me? An asshole to your neighbors? I'm not going to give you anything. Why don't you ask your community? Did you not make friends during that lifetime? Yeah, maybe not. But that doesn't mean that you're not. You can't be a valuable member of society. So you're okay with with, with someone stealing your money and giving it to an asshole? If he's someone that you hate? If there's a possibility that they're still, they, they can still be a part of society well, as productive, well, then what's, 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 what's wrong about the asshole asking you for money? Why, why can't you just give him your money? <laughs> so you need someone to force that from you at threats? More to like remind me what it means to be a good citizen and a good person. You are a good person. You don't need someone to steal from you to remind you you're a good person. What about like roads? You think private sector can provide roads? Private sectors already do. It's businesses that build roads to begin with. Government steals the money, outsources it's businesses that build roads. They outsource the money to the lowest common denominator there, to the politically connected. So that's why it's still like driving on the moon around here, right? You don't have the free market solution to directly choose. Look, you've been creating good roads for the past 10 years. I like the quality of your stuff. Never had a calling for pop up problems or anything like that. I like for you to continue making roads. But do you think that there's a connection in the in the market to uh, you know the growth of the automobile and maybe missing out on the sustainability of we need to start phasing out automobiles before there becomes so much more serious problem? Only the free market can figure that out. Governments can. They just subsidize a lot of unneeded. Uh, Is it possible that it would be too late by the time the market figures it out that we'll be we'll have invested too much in roads, we'll have destroyed too many communities? Well, right now you can't. You can't. You don't have that choice with government. Government's going to do it regardless if you want them or not. They're still going to steal your money and keep funding it whether you want it or not. In a free market, you have the control. I'm done funding it. I'm going to fund this new awesome guy starting a Kickstarter campaign. He's got this new idea about Rose or he has this new vehicle that you know, that flies or you know maybe at that point that's that's where we're going. Right? You end this institution of violence. I don't know what how life and society and culture is going to look like, but it's going to look a lot awesome better than what we have now. You know, you end the institution of slavery. You free up a lot of different ways we can perform agriculture. Right? It doesn't rely on, on using violence and push, hurting people and enslaving them. Well, hey, I gotta go back to work. Yeah, yeah. My name is Cal, by the way. Uh, Alex, nice uh, to meet pleasure you. Pleasure to meet. What pamphlets? You like to? Uh, sure, why not? <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Happy Halloween.